Dashboard Effect podcast. I'm Brick Thompson, and I have Kate Eberly with me. And today we're going to be talking about the first 100 days for a company after it's acquired by a private equity firm and some of the considerations you might want to have with regards to your data and reporting. So what are your thoughts on this topic? I know you've got some, some kind of strong opinions here. Yeah, I think first we'll set the stage a little bit because – where a company's coming from in that first 90 days, you could be anywhere from founder-owned $5 million annual revenue to, okay, you're $100 million and you're actually going to be the starting company for a new platform. What we're probably talking about is we're digging in here is more on the latter end of the spectrum. So you're a larger company, squarely in the middle market, 50 to 100 million, really getting ready to pursue growth, both from an acquisition perspective and organic growth. Uh, so just setting the stage a little bit, that's really who we're targeting in terms of this discussion, because that's where we've seen, I think, this concept of data and really wrapping your hands around what you have available become the most important and then from there, I'd say, first off, congratulations to the executive team. You survived <laughs> diligence. <laughs> you got through to the other side. Uh, now's when the fun really starts. Yeah. I think it's so critical to really start talking about what you want to do in terms of your data and what you're doing with your metrics and your reporting in those first 90 days because it's such a rich time of change. It's kind of like starting the first day of school. There's all new possibilities, new relationships, and really just a chance to set the tone of where you're going to go as a new team. Yeah, absolutely. And there's such an opportunity here. You know, it would be uh, easy. And I think uh, five years ago, it was typical to say, okay, we've now finished this transaction. We've got some sub sub subsidiary companies we haven't integrated yet. Let's start building a traditional data warehouse. And we actually think a different approach is warranted to get to um, – value much more quickly. So you make that first 100 days, you really kick off your value creation plan with a bang, not not slow. And OK, we'll start knowing what's going on six months from now. Yeah, I think one of the, the core assumptions in that older model was that, OK, you hit the first 90 days and you know what you want to measure. So often we see, particularly if you're pursuing this buy and build approach, you're building a new company and you're bringing together multiple different business units and you're trying to really navigate consensus around what is core to our business? What do we have to measure? And if you're immediately transitioning into a data warehouse, that's going to be a lot of technical debt that will not allow you to be nimble and pivot as you learn new things about the business, about what you really need to be measuring. So I think the approach that we'd start to advance is rather than building your data warehouse out of the gates, building something that's going to be pretty difficult to adapt over time, it's taking the data lake approach, getting something really fast out there so that the team can start accessing their reports quickly, even if it's not a formal report, just getting in, querying some of your sources so you can test hypotheses as you nail your operational set of KPIs. So I think you're right. And, and I think what that means really to me, and we've successfully done this with clients, Clients is you take that data lake concept instead of having to go to say a full Kimball model, you know, Snowflake Data Mart's data warehouse um, analysis services cube to get to your reporting. You actually just take all of the data from your transactional systems, from your platform company, from your subsidiaries, your add-ons, and you put it all into a data lake. And from there, you can start giving access almost immediately to analysts, to report writers. You can put a semantic layer on top of it so even technical executives can start getting to that data and start getting meaningful outputs almost immediately. You can have the outputs in Power BI or in Power Pivot in Microsoft Excel, however you normally do it, but get there quickly so you're not waiting sort of four or five months until you have a piece of your data warehouse done and then you're adding other pieces in. Get it all there. You may end up putting some of that into a more traditional data warehouse setup so that you have very specific governance and very specific data quality rules and so on. Um, that'll come and you can do that out of the data lake, but get the data lake there first and build on top of that. Yeah, I love that approach in large part because I think one of the biggest pain points is not just, okay, to get a really well-functioning, robust data warehouse in place, you need to wait maybe three to four months at least. It also takes maybe that long to get aligned on your final KPIs if you're going to build something right out of the gates that's 
that level of has that level of integrity, I guess. Right. So by building with something flexible like a data lake, getting your team in, running lots of different iterations of what your metrics might look like, what slices you need, what should be in the numerator and the denominator, you can just move that much faster using concrete results to inform that consensus building and, and navigating what's really going to matter to the team. Yeah, that's right. It's a good point. It gives you a sandbox to start figuring out what are the most important KPIs. You may know, but there may be some alignment to do with your new PE owners, the, you know, the, the partners that are on your deal uh, and the executives, and having a sandbox to be able to send analysts in and start pulling data and figuring that out is really important. It also allows you, even if you're doing it uh, in, in a bit of a rough way, to consolidate data from across those add-ons. Um, you'll do that eventually. I mean, that's always the plan, but you can start getting a consolidated view right away. So you don't have things like we've heard of where a CFO is logging into 12 different instances of QuickBooks mm -hmm. to be able to, to try to get the data and then, and then transcribing that. Uh, the reports there into Excel and trying to put them together. No, just go ahead and dump that into the data warehouse. There may be some finagling to get it exactly right, but you can start to get the broad strokes really quickly. Yeah, I think we've all seen those times when we're working with a client and they've had multiple eight hour plus meetings when they're talking about things in the abstract. This would be great to have if it were slightly like this. I don't actually know what our historical performance looked like, right. but I think this is really important. All conversations are just better when you're actually looking at results on the page and really can connect that to your future state vision. Yeah, okay, completely agree. And I think this is where the world's going. And actually, I'll throw in another twist here. You know, we're, we're all trying to be experts on AI right now. <laughs> I'm sure there are experts somewhere the rest of us are just guessing. But I think that what we're going to see very soon is much better natural language querying on top of data sets. You know, uh, Microsoft Power BI for a long time has had the Q&A function. And, yep, you can get it tuned to where it's useful, but it's not super versatile. You have to have it well-tuned for exactly what you want to do with it. I have a feeling we're going to see Microsoft, because of their partnership with OpenAI and their work with the, the uh, ChatGPT4 and, and other tools there, we're going to see them starting to point analytics chatbots at data stores. And if you have a data lake ready to go, um, you'll be able to point at those immediately and start getting answers. Just a guess, but I think that's coming. We'll see. So I think we've covered some of the benefits of the data lake so far, just in terms of pure speed to insight. Uh, I think, you know, on the one hand, you could be saying, well, couldn't I do that already with some of my existing source systems? If they're in place, I have that data today. One of the things we used to caution folks when they were going in and starting to build Power PI was to avoid just connecting directly to the source. The tool comes with a lot of built-in connectors. Sure. It can connect to almost anything. But the more that you're actually tapping those systems, the more drain and the more performance may be impacted for other operations that you need to be running throughout the organization. Yeah, it's a really good point that uh, we do get requests for, hey, can you just directly connect to our transactional system? And as you point out, that's almost never a best practice because you may end up with queries hitting the transactional system that you didn't anticipate, depending on the, what the report writers are doing, that actually cause performance issues. You also end up with a more brittle solution. So you've got this connection inside of a single solution, let's say a Power BI file or an Excel file connecting to that. Um, and so now when you want to do another report, okay, you make a copy of that, hopefully it's connected right. And then let's say you cor correct a connection down the road in one version, oh, well, let's go back and correct it here. You're way better off getting that consolidated into the data lake or a data warehouse and then connecting to that. It can be hard to see that when you, you know, you want to keep the cost down and get it done more quickly, but I, I would submit that you can get it done almost as quickly. Just take that intermediate step into the data lake first. So, Rick, I'm pretty sold on the data lake. I don't know about you. <laughs> I, I didn't intend for this this episode to be all about that, but we, we did kind of end up there. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious. The thought crosses my mind. Why would, if a team has analysts, you already have data in your transactional systems, why would you go this route instead of just having your analysts doing what they do and going and getting those exports? So great question. I, I think what you're asking me is why not just have them pull CSV files or s some kind of export um, and report on that? 
Um, my answer would be that that's fine if you really only need to get data once and answer a question or a series of questions once, but that data is going to be out of date in a few hours. And so really what you want to have is a process that's pulling that data you know, once a day and updating the data lake. So you've heard of ETL. Um, that's what you do to pull data and end it up in a data warehouse. We refer to this as ELT. So you're extracting loading into the data lake and then at some point doing transforms on the data. And so it's a later lift. It's mm. easier to get it in there. You're not doing all of those transforms up front. And your analysts can now get at that raw data, but it's being updated on some kind of regular basis, whatever your business requires once a day, once every four hours, that type of thing. Um, so that's why. So not only in the first 90 days are you focused on answering key questions, you also have pretty repeatable processes in place if you find that, actually, I'm asking that question every day. Right. And I need something that I can consistently go to and start viewing more regularly versus bugging Jim in my accounting yeah. team to just keep running that report over and over. Yeah, and you can definitely do that. You know, Jim from accounting <laughs> can go in and keep doing that every day, and that might be the right solution depending on the use case. But in general, I think you're going to be happier having all of your analysts having access to the data and not having to rerun it. They're just connecting to the semantic layer that you put on top of the data lake, and their, their reports are updating as the new data comes in. Yeah. So I guess some key takeaways that stand out to me from this conversation. One, first 100 days are pretty critical. Uh, you've got a lot going on. You're trying to make sense of this organization, build new relationships with management and operational teams. Uh, so when it comes to your data, the advantage of moving to something like a data lake is that it's a first step in something that's going to support wherever you go as a business long term, while also still getting you really fast answers to some of those rapid questions that are evolving as you're trying to set the vision for the rest of the hold. Right, right. Fast answers. It, it will be evolving, too, because you've now got a new management team, a new board. Um, you're going to be getting in sync on, on how you're going to operate, how you're going to report out, what metrics different people care about, what KPIs people care about. So it does give you that flexibility, and it gives you the ability to just start doing that almost immediately. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm convinced. If I uh, <laughs> Next time I start my buy and build company, I'll be adding a data lake in, I think. <laughs> all right, me too. All right. I think that's all we're going to cover today. Cool. That <laughs> Thanks, sounds great. Thanks, Rick. Right. See you later. <laughs>